Welcome back to the It's Bigger Than Me podcast. I am so excited about this guest today. I love everything about this guy. I mean, he's a quality guy. He is just real down to earth. And I love the fact that in the sales industry, his company is called uh, Make Sales Great Again. Um, and he does that. He just really gets in there to support people on so many levels. And um, gosh, I remember <laughs> when we first met, it was, uh, you're in my phone labeled Todd is uh, way cooler than me, you know? And like, mom is way cooler than me. We had this whole, like, I'm cooler, you're cooler. And then we just switched here. Like, no, you're cooler, I'm cooler. And um, you always just keep it real, Todd. So I'm really excited to have you on the show. Um, I would love for you to share your background with people, um, just who you are, where you're from, what you're doing, like what your purpose and mission is, because it's a big one. Um, in an industry where a lot of people can be like, eh, but gosh, you've been able to really set some people free and help people just create incre incredible impacts and lives for themselves in this industry. So please dive on in and share a little bit more about who's Todd. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how deep you want me to get, but the short story is a guy that didn't come from a lot financially, uh, made a ton of mistakes in my life and was tired of making those mistakes, right? Like I think so many people are judged on their past and like things that they do. And as it was a topic of discussion with somebody the other day and and it just comes up as like, there are a lot of people in the world, unfortunately, more people that want you to fail than want you to win, you know, friends, family members, et cetera. And people are always so stuck on mistakes. And it's almost like life in general, right? It's like, your life could be going so great. And then one negative thing happens and all of a sudden it's chaos, right? And you forget about all the good in your life because there's so much to be grateful for. And we all forget that. So, you know, starting in sales at a very young age, I was 15 years old, knocking doors, selling vacuum sweepers door to door was really bad, like really, really bad. And imagine selling a $2,000 vacuum sweeper in 1991 uh, with 20% interest. You know, I was like, yeah, wasn't really good at that. And then uh, got into gambling, started running, uh, playing pool for a living and car games, a whole other story. Did that for a decade of my life. Uh, illegal scene was kind of making money off the site, which is a lot of craziness. Who I am individually, though, now is a different person than I was even five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. My mission's changed and it's changed a lot. My mission has changed uh, in many ways. Number one, and the biggest thing has changed, I was rebaptized, uh, you know, two years ago, changed my life tremendously. And I think I, you know, when I talk about Make Sales Great Again, the name was created because there are so many people in the world not doing the right thing. And sales has a bad name. I was talking to a gentleman on the phone today, a really good friend of mine. He was just like, yeah, well, this is being said about this and this. And, he, and he's like, I'm so scared that this is going to happen. I said, hey, 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 hang on a second. Are you doing everything integrity based? Yes. Is it, are you being authentic? Are you being real? Are you not lying to them? He's like, yes. And again, you got nothing to worry about. Okay. Life is what you make of it. And sales is the same way. And the profession was getting such a bad name for so many years. It just drove me nuts. And I wanted to create a platform where I can teach people how to sell the right way with integrity and really serve people. We have shirts that we have made up called sell to serve and we serve people. We don't sell them. Now I'm not opposed to the word sell, but Make Sales Great Again really dives into the integrity-based practices. Now, you know, when I just wrote my book, Make Sales Great Again, The Ultimate Sales Bible, you know, this book was launched and it's really the epitome of my company. You know, I've given people a platform to come learn, come train with us, uh, put them in a, in a really good space that they can be free to tell me the negative things that are happening in their environments and that we navigate through them, teach them how to sell the right way, serve people, and the amount of business that they've been able to get from that and the amount of referral business and constant talks about actually making sales great again because the industry itself, it just got a bad name. It doesn't matter what you're in. You could be anything. Uh, I'm the CSO of Apex Roof and Restoration, Chief Sales Officer, a $140 million organization. We've got 400 reps nationwide. We're growing like crazy. And as we grow, it was like, oh God, you're selling roofs door to door. You're selling solar. You're doing this. It's shady. You don't teach me. No, no, it doesn't have to be. And I think that people miss the context of what sales was. And I always say this back in the old days, my dad, 1931, before he passed away in 2017, it was a handshake. You were done. You didn't have to sign 5,000 pieces of paper to prove that what you were saying was true. And nowadays you do, right? So I think Make Sales Great Again, the company in general, we do a lot of speaking. We do a lot of workshops. We go out and just try to train people to do things the right way. But it's really now shifted again uh, to a more faith-driven kind of role for me. I feel like that I was not as grateful for the things in my life that I should have been many, many moons ago. And even in recent years, five, six years ago, I think that a lot of the mistakes I was allowing to weigh down on me and it, my past was hindering what I can do as a man in the future. And not just for my family and my wife and the people I love most, just for everybody. And I really believe in my heart of hearts that God put me on this earth to prove to people that there is a way. 
And sales is just an exceptional way to create an exceptional amount of money and do it the right way. So we teach people to do that. So that's just the, the short version, but yes, that's a little bit about who I am. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. Cause it's like, you know, when people think of sales instantly, what's the image that comes up? So some greasy car salesman, something gross, something like I'm about to get scammed or schemed. And it's, <laughs> it's like, I remember I used to be like, Ooh, I don't want to like, I don't want to do sales. And then I realized I'm actually really good at it. And I had a lot of no's, a lot of hard knocks. I mean, you have to, when you're in this industry and a no is not a no forever. I know just uh, anytime somebody gives me an objection, we were talking about this. I'm like, great. Here's another way that I can lead somebody to a solution. And it's up to them if they want to take it. Um, and we do a lot of that in our company as well, because our company, our model is network marketing. I roll, cue the eye roll for most people. But I'm so glad <laughs> that it is because the industry has gotten so gross because people do not know how to serve. They just spam and try to sell and they don't actually know how to serve. Some do, yeah. but most don't. And in our company, we're very big on leadership. I know you are as well. And really just being there to serve and lead people through. You need a solution. Here's a solution. Now, do you have enough credibility to be that one to lead them through it? Let's work on that. So I'm sure you do so much of that inside of your programs. And I know you said in a couple hours, you're actually flying off to a really big conference of 5,000 people to be able to speak to them, which is amazing. So yeah. I would love to even go down the leadership route because I mean, when it comes to leadership, the Lord gave me something very specific of, first of all, the world is starving for biblical leaders, not these dictators, not people creating more followers of just themselves. It's somebody who's holding a torch. And they're passing the flame down. It's not, how can my flame get bigger? It's how can I help develop other people? Because there's so many leaders out there that are so insecure, but there's 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 very few people, or there should be more, I should say. There's people doing it, but there should be more. Developing leaders, but getting in the trenches with people and helping people develop, that's hard work. That's not like, oh, you just one day magically, here you are. Like It is tough. And so I'd love to know your take on just leadership in sales and I don't know. I'm sure you probably have a story or two that you could tell when it comes to your journey about leadership, because clearly we all have a story. <laughs> yeah, I think that for me, leadership is super subjective, right? I like, what does leadership mean to you? I feel like people are, they've got this vision of being a boss, right? And the boss mentality, you move, oh, sorry, you <laughs> knock that over. You move up in the world, you get a title, and then all of a sudden you think that you're a leader. I think the biggest mistake companies make is they start promoting people that aren't ready for leadership, right? Mm -hmm. But here's another side that people miss. There are a lot of people that are exceptional at sales that are not good leaders, right? Like I'm an amazing number one salesperson, in your network marketing environment, and you promote me based on my sales ability is the wrong move, right? Because you don't know if that person's really good at leadership. On the flip side, there are someone that is half as good as I am at sales, but is exceptional at leadership. But a lot of companies don't have a leadership platform. You know, uh, we were looking at some statistics the other day, my partner, Brandon, and I, and Harvard University did a study on companies that actually involve leadership. Now, they talk about leadership, and they're very intricate in how they specifically want to do it, um, and they talk about how outside sources should come in. As we know, right, let's say, you know, my mother tells me to do something. I'm like, yeah, whatever, mom, you know, and then my uncle comes over and tells me to do something or someone, a mentor or someone, and it's the exact same thing my mom told me. And I'm like, man, that's a great idea. My mom's like, Todd, I've been telling you this for 10 years because it comes from a different person, right? We don't see like people that we've been around, we hear from them so much that we're kind of like, it's all fluff for the same thing, or they're trying to figure out a new way to kind of like lead me or mentor me or push me to my goal. When I think that a lot of companies, Harvard University has said that only 5% in 2024 of companies actually use outside companies to help leadership and develop their leaders before they promote them to a leadership role. So like, what does that mean? That means that we're rushing people into leadership, sometimes forced in a role based on expansion, network marketing. I know that Johnny was talking about insurance. You know, there's a lot of people forced into these leadership roles because they need someone there because the company is growing so quick. There's like, oh, this is the next person. But what you're not doing in leadership is you're not providing someone the value and the instruction on how to be a great leader. I think to me, if you were to ask me, what's the one most important thing you can do in leadership is providing culture. And mm -hmm. culture to me is just, it's everything, right? Like with Apex, the organization, uh, with all of these different offices, they had five offices when I first came on board. Now they have uh, 17 offices in five different states. We're growing like crazy and no one knew anyone. So what did I do? I just implemented a very simple thing, just a morning Zoom call at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time every day, where it is an optional call, not a mandatory, you don't have to be on, but an optional call. And we know it starts slow. And we had one person come on, then three people, then five. And now every single day, there's 90 to 100 of the top reps in the company that choose 
to be on that call because they're getting to know people from across the entire company. People are pouring into people. I use a different speaker every day. I don't even speak anymore because I schedule out speakers a month long. Just so even if you're brand new to the company, does that mean you don't have value to add? It does not, right? We all have different experiences in our life. So when I say leadership is like a little subjective, I mean that people define it differently. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you really dive into leadership and look what it is, in order to lead others, you have to lead yourself first. And most people can't do that. Most people don't even know how to lead themselves. They're asking people to do things that they don't even do. They're asking people to yes. jump in the trenches when they've never been in the trenches. And that's a huge mistake for a lot of companies. So uh, leadership is, is the most important thing for every organization. I just think there's so many companies out there that need us, that need good leadership development, that really need people to choose and train good leaders and then get them ready for the role before they even get in it. Mm, that's so good. I love the fact that you even went in, like everybody defines leadership differently because that word gets tossed around. Right. Um, and I even think about the word like influence or influencer gets tossed around and it gets a bad rap because you get these people that take something that has a weighty call and a responsibility and they tarnish it. So then therefore a lot of people are like, eh, does it doesn't really even matter. And it does. It absolutely does. And, and I'm reminded of, you know, how our company even grew to where it is now to become an opportunity to even get into the network marketing space was from our leadership academy because it was it's a 16 week deep dive into biblical leadership of you know what does the word say and like really getting into yourself first before you can go and like lead anybody else and we've had thousands of people go through that program because it starts with us like you said everybody wants to go out and have the accolades and they want to be in the front and they want all the results but where are those those results don't matter because they're going to crumble if the foundation isn't there and so I love that you said that, you know, people definitely promote people way too early. I totally agree. Um, I think the world is definitely lacking on discernment. They look at, um, you know, just like, oh, you're making this money and you're that, or you have this much notoriety and they look at all this superficial stuff, but it's like, let's look at the core. Like, who are you as a human? How do you treat the people around you? How do you treat the people who aren't necessarily producing, but are hungry to do it? Like we got to get back to like the basics. And so um, when you do that, that's where make sales great again you can make things so much more fun is because you're actually serving people on such a core level that's giving them a solution for you name it i mean there's sales for everything but it's uh the leadership piece that is just so it's just missing and people know it like some people can't really put their finger on it they're like i don't really know what it is but something's off that's your discernment saying hey there's something there's something wrong here but when you leave people better and when you found them, you actually lead them through, even if they have objections, even if they say something <laughs> crude. I mean, you've probably heard plenty of your fair share. So if I'm like, wow, that was wild. You must've been having a really bad day. I'm not going to take it personal. I'm just looking at you as a, you're a hurt human being. Hopefully I can leave you better than when I found you, but they always remember that experience. So yeah. I'd love for you to maybe touch on some of those, uh, either it'd be, I got a wild experience or something like that, because People in sales, like, I mean, we go through some stuff, man. Like there's some stuff that you're just like, I, <laughs> I don't even know how that was able to be said, but on the other side of it, it's like, you, you have to look at humans differently. You have to be able to look at them with more love and empathy and grace um, in order to really be able to serve them. So from a male's point of view, I would love to hear your take on that. Yeah. I think that if you're in sales and you're trying to force something on someone, it's like the worst thing you could ever do, right? Sales is, it's just a simple conversation. I don't like the word sales tactics. And as a guy that, you know, looks like I do and tattoos all over my body, you could automatically assume aggressive, right? Like he is going to try to come close me hard. And I can see where that perception may be reality for some people, but, you know, sales is all about listening. It's not really about talking and salespeople, as you know, very well, we love to talk. We love to run our mouths. That's the best thing we do. Let's just talk, talk, talk. And, you know, from again, a male's perspective, looking the way I do, you know, a lot of people would think that the best way to sell is just throw all the features and benefits on the wall, which most people do, right? Like, look at all these beautiful, shiny objects, right? And they don't talk about the negative. I teach people how to sell from the negatives, right? And I also te teach people how to block objections up front. There's a big difference between like selling someone all the beautiful features and benefits. And that's when lying really occurs, right? Someone says, well, I don't need that, but I need this. And then they go, oh yeah, but it also does that, right? And then you kind of sound like, eh, are you sure it does that? Because there's no perfect product or service, period, end of conversation. The only perfect person in the world, Jesus himself, right? Let's call it what it is. So as we're selling, I teach people a lot that asking good questions gets you the information to serve them. 
and dial into what's specific to their needs will get a better engagement rather than just throwing things at them and say, oh, that's the one they like most. So let me just hit on that. The other side to selling again, whether male or female, is that a lot of people are worried about objections that they know are going to surface. Like I'll give everybody a tip on this right now. You want to teach someone how to sell a team, anybody in general, here's what you do. You list the top five objections that you know are going to come up. They come up every time. You did it earlier. You probably didn't even know you did it. You said, oh, network uh, marketing. Oh, cue the eye roll. Okay, that's blocking the objection, okay? Because you know it's going to come up. People think a certain way about network marketing, direct sales, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. Salesmanship in general, that is. So you blocked that. You brought it up before they did. So I teach people master the top five objections that you know are going to come up every single time. Get in a room with a group of people and listen to the way that they handle those objections so you have multiple avenues so you can adhere to a different personality when you need to. Because here's the thing, sales is not like rocket science. It's like, you know, these objections are coming. These are the most common objections. So surface them. Like Molly, listen, I know that you probably heard network marketing in the past. You're probably like, oh God, here we go. Another network marketing. Let me guess, you're going to ask me to call all my friends and families and relatives and get them to sell the same thing you want me to sell. All that. Listen, it's not like that, Molly. We're here to serve you. We want to help you grow not only spiritually, but really make a bunch of money in sales and do it the right way. Okay. Now, if anything I'm telling you doesn't hit with you, that's okay as well. Just tell me that. We'll just stop the call. We'll stop the presentation. That's it. And you can go on your way because the last thing I'm going to do is waste your time. All I'm asking is that you're 1%, even 1% remotely open to what we have to talk about. And just be honest with me because here's the thing. If our product or service isn't for you, I'm going to be honest with you and tell you it's not. You want to know why? This is for all the salespeople listening because people will give you more business on the nose than they will the yes. People never think about that. They're like, I'm fighting so hard to get this one sale. And it's like, dude, it ain't about the one sale. It's about the multitude of sales. It's about repeat business. It's about being honest and telling someone, you know what, Molly, everything you told me, I'm not really sure this is the right fit for you. And guess what? A lot of salespeople be like, oh, that's a takeaway or attack. No, no, no. It's really not for you. Like if you handed me the money, I would not take it, right? Because I don't think it's a good fit for you. And what that does, it builds trust and credibility. I have literally received myself personally in sales, business, et cetera, more clients from telling someone that my company wasn't for them than trying to force them to believe that it was. And I think that if you are a person of faith and you are integrity-based and you do that, you're gonna get business that most people don't think is there. And that's really the integrity behind sales that most people miss. Mm, that is so good. I love that. And it's I, I love doing that in our company as well, like because I work in the field with our ambassadors and people will be like, how would you respond to this? I The takeaway, like this isn't for you. If you're not willing to do the set out plan that's proven to give you results, if you're not willing to, connect with people, build relationships, pour in and lead them, then this really isn't for you. Or if you're not willing to learn and they're like, what? Because they're so used to people trying to hard sell them. And yeah. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to convince anybody. Uh, people yeah. are going to be moved by my conviction, not my convincing. And so I love that you phrased that the way that you did, because it's so good. And most people, like you said, like if you're, if you set it up the way that you just set it up. So if you got to rewind, go listen to it again, do it. That was gold the people. That was absolute gold. People will be like, wow, that was genuine. That was real. I want to send business your way. I want people to come to you because that nap, that was so real and they're starving for real right now. So I love that you teach that because like, again, no one's, no one's really doing that. And if they did, the, the it's sales would be so different across the board, but you guys are definitely making a really good dent to show people the better way to serve. And so, you know, you know, your thing, Molly, really quick, I kind of want to add to this is that I think that people don't apply this to their lives as well. Right. Let me give you an example. Um, when I'm on stage, I am like brutally honest, right? When you go to uh, someone's Instagram and you're like, Molly, does that really show me who you are? Is that the real you on Instagram? I'm like, yep, that's me. I post everything about me. Okay, Molly, what's the worst thing you've ever done in your life? Think about it. Don't tell me it. Is that on Instagram? No, right? Most people, it's not, right? Because why? We want to show all the good, all the successes, mm -hmm. our family time, et cetera. You know, I think when people are deciding to work with me, I am very transparent of who I am and who I was as a human and how I have changed as a person. And I think that we have to sell ourselves on that as well first. See, sales isn't just about selling a product or service. It's also selling yourself that you have the ability to actually change. People say a zebra doesn't change their stripes. I completely disagree. There are so many people that have changed their lives, again, whether it's faith-driven or just making a choice to be a different person. It doesn't even have to be faith-driven, right? But I think like for me, when I'm on stage, people are like, oh, like, you know, uh, tell me, you know, I've heard all the good, right? Like, what have you done bad? So I just started blocking it all. 
I said, hey guys, you know, my name's Todd Special. Uh, I've cheated, I've stolen, I've uh, been arrested, I've had a DUI, I've gone through all these trial and errors in my life that I'm not ashamed of, man. I'm just not. And I don't care if millions of people see this, this is who I am as a man. And, and the moment that you decide to make that change to be a better person, and you know that you've made that change and you can prove that you've actually been that person, then your life being sold, you're selling yourself, changes extraordinarily. The problem is just like there's a lot of people that hate the tradition in sales or a lot of people that will hate the fact that you have changed, right? Because some people stay stagnant because they don't sell themselves on the ability to change. So a lot of people bring those people down on sales too, right? Oh, don't get in the sales industry because it's horrible. Oh, don't trust that person because they've made mistakes. Oh, don't do this. No, no. You have the ability to change. Everyone does. And you shouldn't shy away from your mistakes because it's built you and who you are as a person, as long as you're on the right path doing the right thing, right? So I feel like for most people that before they try to go out and actually sell someone, you have to, again, learn to sell yourself, just like being a leader. You have to be a leader first. You have to lead yourself first. So I kind of wanted to add that in there because I don't want people listening to this thinking that it's, it's sales, it's about money, it's about money. It should be about your faith, integrity as a human first and how you can take all the mistakes you've made and use them to catapult you in a very authentic, real way. And then for the people that want to run with you, notice I didn't say for you, but run with you, work with you, not for you. Those people are going to be gladiators for life. The other one, Molly, you know, you can't change everyone, but you can try like we do. It makes sales great again. But the truth is people have to make that decision on their own. I'm so glad that you brought that up because it's something I've definitely been in the last couple of years. I'm like, okay, I got I have some of those pieces that definitely were trying to hold on to me for shame. And, and then it just keeps getting released. Like I smoked marijuana for 10 years. I'm a founder of a Christian company. How is that going to look? And I released it publicly and the amount of feedback and like, oh my gosh, me too's that I got was like insane. Yeah. Um, you know, from that, doing drugs in my twenties, you know, being promiscuous before, like I got married, like there's so many different things where it's not great, but it's relatable and you can't lead somebody where you haven't been. And so when you are in those situations and you're sharing those things, it's like, oh, wow, I never would have expected that. Never would have expected that. Uh, recently, my husband and I just were kind of goofing around and just sharing just dumb little moments that we have together on Instagram. The amount of feedback that we've been getting of us just being silly, like we're just nerds, we're dorks. Yeah. They're like, that is gold. And I'm like, all right, babe, there's definitely something here. We know it. We got to put it out there and give people a dose of happy, real. This is funny um, because yeah. people get so like, I have to look this certain way. And it's like, screw what you look like. Like, just go yeah. out there and be who you are. So then people can be like, oh, wait, I can so relate to that rather than this perfect patty that Instagram portrays for 99.9% yeah. .9 of people. And that, like you said, adds into the sale, adds into how you serve people because they're not just seeing like, oh, here's this perfect little whatever. Wow, that's really relatable. I can connect with that. And, you know, just being in sales for a long time, it's it's not just you're the best. It's do I relate to you? Do, can I see myself hanging out with you, having dinner with you, doing life with you? Like people want to answer those questions in their head, whether it's going to happen or not. And that, that goes into a purchase. I have seen that time and time again for a variety of different things, especially in the coaching space, you know, in network marketing, can you lead me, you name it. Um, just it's, it's wild. So, uh, yeah. Todd, this has been, I mean, gosh, there's so much gold into this, uh, before we wrap up today, is there anything else you'd love to, uh, leave the audience with? Yeah, no, listen, I would just say that if you're, don't ever be afraid to do anything, right? Like, I. I in conclusion to kind of this amazing time with you, which I miss you and Johnny so much. I loved the first time we met in the studio. It was so much fun. We sat there and laughed for hours. It was amazing. And we went to the, what was that noodle place or something we went to? That was good too. Remember, I couldn't eat anything because I don't eat anything. So whatever, but I uh, don't like seafood, whatever. And you guys took me to the weirdest place ever. I don't know, noodles or something. Do you remember that place down by the I, studio? I don't remember what it was called, but I do remember. I was like, this is interesting. What? A, but hey, do you, man? Do you? Super weird and I couldn't do it. But anyways, listen, I'll tell you this, you know, if anybody is like listening to this right now and they're wondering if they can become whatever become means for you, right? When I was running illegal card games, I was robbed at gunpoint three times, you know, in a matter of 10 years, uh, having a cold pistol to your head and uh, being the steroid guy, being the guy that's running illegal card games for a living. Uh, wasn't the best father because I wasn't always there. I was kind of like, you know, working all these hours and late nights. I would get home, my kids would go to school, I'd be sleeping all day. It just wasn't the most optimal life. And I remember, you know, 15, 20 years ago when I decided that I wanted to speak and I wanted to write a book and I wanted to be a motivational speaker. And this is before I ever spoke to anybody or anything. I was literally running illegal car games. That was my profession for a decade. And I remember the people in the room telling me back then, they were laughing at me, Todd, come on, you're 
Like you're the drunk guy that punches people downtown that drinks all the time, runs illegal card games. This is your life. Like you can't be, you're not going to be a motivational speaker, bro. Come on, dude. Like, let's just be real. Right. And they didn't believe that I could be the guy that I am today. Well, for anybody listening, here's what I can tell you. Fast forward 15 years, running a $140 million organization, uh, scaling to make sales great again, to help empower and change people's lives. Uh, Rebaptized two years ago, have written three best-selling books, have spoken on many stages with some extraordinary people. The people that I tell today that I was the guy that I was back then, they don't believe that now. But the people back then that I told that I wanted to be the guy that I am today, they didn't believe it either. So the question is, can you change? And the answer is yes. And I'm a living proof of that. So don't hold yourself back. Don't stop because it's not anybody's perception of you. The only opinion that matters of you is you. So just want to leave you with that story. Mm, so good. I love it. And just back to the zebra example, like you said, like people say you can't change the stripes, but you can't, it's up to you. And so if you're in an environment where people are telling you, you can't, then you need to get out and go find another environment. And you and I both know there's so many toxic environments out there because people don't want you to change because it forces them to look at what they need to change. Most people don't want to change at all. They just want to keep doing the same old, same complaining that that doesn't work, but never doing anything about it. Until one day, hopefully somebody can see a glimpse of your life and what you've done, the hard work that you've done. And yeah. maybe it can, not for your glory, but for them to wake up one day and being like, look, there's so much more. You woke up in, in a miracle. You have breath in your lungs. You can go try again or do something different. Um, and so many people are just, they're sleepwalking. But there's, I think, I feel like there's such a big movement of more people that are like, you know what? Like, I'm noticing like there's just a pattern here, whether it's in the government, it's in wherever, like there's just stuff going on that I'm like, maybe it's not all what I think it is. And I got to go do something different. And so with the story like yours, what you've been able to do from the past to present has just been incredible. So um, yeah, you I definitely miss anybody, you too. Anybody's in sales want to leave for this, get this book, please, for the love of God. Okay. 547 pages. I am going to do a shameless shout out. This book is like literally holding a celebrity to me. I truly mean it. It's like four and a half years of my life, 143,000 words, 547 pages. And I honestly believe it has everything there is that you would ever need to know about sales. I've read tons of sales books in my life. I'm not just saying it again, because it's my book. I really, really mean this. You guys can get it on Amazon, the ultimate sales Bible, shameless plug. Yes, but it's really to serve. I would literally send this to you free. If you asked me to, that's how much I believe in this. So uh, check it out. Awesome book. I think you guys really love it. And uh, thanks for having me on Molly. Sincerely. Of course. Of course. Well, thank you all for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Bye everyone. See you guys. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode. It means the world to me that you would lean in, listen in, and be able to hear the value that's being shared on this show. Don't forget, if you love this episode, rate the show, leave me a review, be sure to share it with a friend, and don't forget to tag me on social media. I will definitely be giving you a shout out. Also, come say hi, drop in the DMs. I would love to be able to hear what stood out to you the most on the episode, and if there's any topics that you would like to hear on the show, we'll see you next time.